have a document open here called palm.psd, which you can find in the working folder. Now, this has been edited, as you can see from the layers panel. The original image looked like this and all the content was stored in the background layer. What I did was create a selection around that palm tree and then I used content aware fill in a new separate layer to hide that original tree. And then I created a copy of it and put it into a layer of its own right at the top of the stack called palm. So this technique really works at its best when we are working with just an item in a layer that you wish to edit. In this case, it's just the palm tree. So if I hide the other two layers, that's all that I have. It's just a very kind of basic selection of that portion of the tree. And it's got a little bit of the blue sky in there as well. So that's the only thing we're going to edit. And the reason why I had to put a background in here is because when this tree moves, we want to be able to make it look as though, well, hide the original position of the tree in the original background photo in there. Using Puppet Warp requires us to right click on the layer we're going to edit. And you should really choose Convert to Smart Object because if you don't, this will be an edit you apply once and you can't change afterwards. So Convert to Smart Object. Do make sure you get the little Smart Object symbol, symbol on the palm layer and then go to edit puppet warp from the list in there. Now, when this pops up on screen, it's going to zoom in a little bit closer so we can see just to focus on the palm tree portion of the image. We get this little sort of um, lattice uh, effect over the content in that layer. So wherever these little gray dividing lines are in here, that, that becomes a point of articulation. So we can more organically bend and manipulate things. Starting in the options across the top, working from left to right under the mode here, usually normal is fine. If you wish to create something that is going to move more rigidly, like maybe an architectural image, then rigid will be the one to choose. If you need to really bend and bow things, um, then uh, distort might be the option to go for. But I would tend to say start off with normal uh, density. Well, you've got normal, fewer points and the mesh becomes less dense, I would suggest to always go to more points just to get a better end result, better quality in other words. Leave expansion set to two pixels, that's the default in there. And we definitely need to see the mesh in there. <laughs> At this point then you're thinking, right, okay, so what do I do? Do I just start dragging it? Do I clicking it? You're supposed to add pins and it doesn't show you this, but hover you anywhere over your mesh. Now I'm gonna start right down at the bottom here and left click that adds a pin. If I, I zoom in here, the pin won't look any bigger, but that's my pin. I'm going to zoom out and then I'm going to add one just around about where the horizon line is. Click in there and then pan up one in the portion where the tree starts to bend and then one up here as well. So what we essentially have is the mesh has an expansion area. That is the expansion area just here. So that little region that runs out from the pixels of the tree outwards, that is what that expansion means in here. So it's basically just extending the mesh to make sure it's grabbed absolutely everything in that layer. That's what that means. And then the pins, well, from here, get a good clear view of your palm tree. And then the reasons why I put a pin down at the bottom is because if I didn't, the tree would just start flapping around at the bottom, it would flap this way. And that way we want to essentially anchor the tree down in place at the bottom. All that we really need to do is hover your cursor over the top pin, click on it to make it active and just drag and you can bend it into position like this. If I click on that pin, I can also choose to rotate it as well. Up at the top, there's a rotate option. It looks still like a little bit of a bend in there. So I could swipe over that angle value and just bend that round a touch as well, just to make it look a little bit straighter. But that is something that you really will struggle to do anywhere else in Photoshop. And Puppet Warp excels at doing this kind of thing. So again, there wasn't anything particularly really bad with the image, but having that kind of kink in the tree could be a bit of a problem. When you're happy with the edits, go up to the top, click on the tick and it will apply them. But crucially, that now appears as an editable option underneath the layer it was applied to called Puppet Warp. You can turn that off, off turn off the visibility. Now, obviously that was before, turn it back on again. And you can also double left click on the word Puppet Warp to go back in, see all of your pins and all of the options across the top as well. Now in this case, I'm going to click on cancel because I don't want to make any edits to the file. 
and I can choose save because it was already a PSD. It'll just update the existing file. And that is Puppet One.